Like, um, like as a student, I think I was, uh, I think I was curious. I recall that I wanted to do everything when I was a student. I wanted to play the piano, I wanted to play in the jazz bands, I wanted to do electronic music, I wanted to do composition, etc. So I kind of did everything. <coughs> Um, <coughs> soundscape composition is actually uh, very strong in Canada, in, in the whole world. If you look at the whole world, then soundscape composition and acoustic ecology, is those are big things centered in Canada. There's a lot of activity here, uh, interestingly, and uh, it's something I've been interested in for quite a long time, but didn't have the resources to kind of do. You needed, I mean, when I started, you needed a portable recorder, <laughs> tape recorder that you could, and microphones that you could take out to uh, into the field and record stuff. I'm, I mean, uh, there's lots of interesting sounds around, so um, the idea of being able to use them in a composition is is fun, and um, and it's a different, it's, it's a different kind of um, source of material than, say, synthesizing things in the studio. But um, there's lots of music that combines both, and uh, so I got into it because I, I I was interested in you know in in the richness of sounds that are out there in the world, and uh, in being able to sort of I guess you develop a sensibility for them, and then um, get into recording them trying to listen then you need to listen to them more carefully and then decide oh can I use something uh, from this to in in some kind of composition and so in my case I end up I'm in my compositions uh, that that are what what you could call soundscape compositions they're not that realistic in the sense that this is a representation of me out mm -hmm. in the woods you know observing the mating calls of the prairie chickens but I use prairie chicken mating calls <laughs> in a context that's got other sounds that weren't there so I'm layering different kinds of sounds in and then often manipulating them quite a bit so that they're not sort of um, representative completely um, so it's it's kind of a world that goes from the real into the I guess into the um, fantasy uh, it's it's a lot of fun um, to do I must say and in in this studio it's great in, in, in to have such a nice listening space and then uh, in my case I'm interested in spatializing the sound and having it move around so when I'm sitting here I'm hearing the sounds coming from all around me and moving across the listening space and that kind of thing so these eight loudspeakers that we have here are, um, make for a really nice environment to do that kind of thing. I'm hoping that people will find it engaging to listen, and especially in a in an immersive environment like with eight loudspeakers, because it's very special to have the sound all around you. So that is what I hope for, and also, um, you know, we want to draw attention to the environment, to to uh, to the disappearing environments, the disappearing soundscapes. I, I, I mean, it's it's just one aspect of all of that. And people are are recording how much, well, taking note of all of the the encroachment of the urban onto the rural, and then um, and the fact that in fact, if you're listening, you realize how noisy it is out there, <coughs> even in our in our university environment it's very noisy and um, and we should be aware of that because it's it's not good for us um, it's it's not healthy and it's also you know partly so that's what we're trying to draw some attention to that if we can sensitize people to listening in general then they might be more aware of listening that's dangerous or sounds that are dangerous also that we're not hearing all of the frogs that we used to hear uh, out there in the, around the ponds and that kind of thing. One would hope that it could make for a better planet. We have to try. <laughs>